since I moved these over there. So that path keeps going. You may want to have some path of those on the edge of this garden. Mm -hmm. To connect all of the connect all those things together too. Mm -hmm. tells this great story when he was a child that you know he locked himself in the room one day and when when he came out he had wallpapered his entire room with construction paper as a surprise for his mother and so he had early training in design <laughs> we learned pretty early on that that mark used to work at disneyland he was tom sawyer <laughs> I first met Mark when we were both going to college at USC, and I remember Mark being very energetic and someone who really wanted to bring everybody together for a common goal or a common purpose. He was definitely a leader, and that that was just as much as a part of his, his personality as was being a student was part of his personality. Mark was involved in, in lots of different things. He really uh, wanted to use the university. He was finding out absolutely everything that was in the university. He also expressed the fact that he really enjoyed life. When he graduated from Harvard, he moved to Los Angeles, and he was very courageous and went off on his own, him and his partner, to start uh, a design firm. It was really Mark with a bunch of different people expanding in all directions. There's very little hierarchy to the firm. He's able to direct way more people than most people could ever imagine. I think the, the thing that draws us all together, Mark, Bob, me, and Julie, is our interest in the related fields outside of architecture, furniture, urban planning, architecture, landscape architecture product design, graphics, and that we stand in the center of something and look out into other disciplines. I think he sees the office also as a vehicle for exploring ideas and fundamentally changing the world around us in an innovative way. He has enormous confidence, I think, in himself and in the office to be able to do great stuff. I think what's great about the way Mark set up this office is that he engages collaboration pretty aggressively. We don't put all the landscape people in one area or all the architects in another area. So a landscape architect of many years of experience will be working with a junior product designer. We really try to mix everybody up because we can all learn so much from each other. And so there's this trust that whatever anybody says is worthwhile in terms of listening to and that your opinion will be taken seriously. Uh, he has absolute faith that by being open, more things will happen. The office is definitely uh, not the typical professional kind of service-oriented uh, working environment. Um, the models, the amount of models that are on the table. Also, there is this um, uh, kind of playfulness in the work, which is very important, I think. But there are also, uh, there's some seriousness embedded in the playfulness. If you look carefully on the wall, you see a series of analysis. So you can see there are two sides playing against each other. On, the, on top of that, actually, upon the en you know, entry of his office, you actually see products, you see. I think Not Neutral really grew out of um, the sort of custom furniture uh, pieces and lighting pieces that we had been doing for clients for 10 years. We had designed a restaurant um, where we did the, the whole restaurant and the logo graphics and the menu and some dishes. And that was sort of one of those aha moments when it was like, oh, you know, we did this in six weeks. Um, and we were able to turn this around and people wanted to buy them. Then having Not Neutral as this kind of um, adjunct but outside company, uh, we've been able to really kind of look at design at all different scales and things move from one area to the other very fluidly and it's been a really interesting process to, uh, to experiment. It is the non-architectural approach that drives most of the innovation here. 
the chess park represents to me kind of a really great example of our process of how to problem solve, how to get it done at, the, at that price to say, well, we couldn't traditionally build this uh, with a contractor and bidding and other stuff, so we're going to go to a sign company and they're going to build it all in-house, they're going to get the permits and they're going to deliver it on a crane and pop these pieces into place. Like that's not something that that's, I think most architects would have started out in that direction or most landscape architects, but because we think about things as product, as, as architecture, as landscape architecture, um, as environments, uh, why not? I think Mark it usually uh, is the most affected by the indigenous site conditions. Not just physical site conditions, but historical or mythical kind of site conditions that affect your, your initial take on a project. And I think we rely really strongly on those first initial takes. Once one of us has had that personal response, and we jump on board and we'll look at language or history or culture or whatever that one take has been we, we we grow that we grow that seed and I think that he's usually the the person we um, that we grow off of we always say here in the office that every project has its own DNA and that we all understand what the DNA is so that any one of us can take the project and move it forward and always kind of check back and say is this true to the DNA of this project Our work has to appeal both to our mentors and our mothers. If, if you shut out one of them or the other, you're either not doing meaningful work or you're pandering. Um, it is a difficult knife edge to, to kind of sit on, um, to be taken seriously when you're doing work that's trying to appeal to, to everybody. He's been the architect behind the new vision for the for the Grand Park here off Grand Avenue. And the Music Center is very interested in that park because it's really our front yard. But there was a lot of controversy around the fountain within the Civic Park. It is historic and there were so many people that wanted to see it removed and I'm glad it's not going to be removed. But I think he's blended again the consensus. He's been able to leave the fountain intact but yet enhance it in such a way to introduce more water to it to make it more accessible to people so that there's an enjoyment of the fountain. And I think that's a, that's a perfect example of how Mark incorporates what is there, uh, again listening to all the different voices in a opinions and I think comes up with a very spectacular solution. So as this evolves, I think we're going to be uh, recognizing that it was Mark Rios' dream and effort and his ability to work with everyone in this very diverse community that we have. When I first met Mark, uh, he was working on the project to improve and uh, widen Grand Avenue before Disney Hall opened. And I realized that he had done a complete project before I got here to study reworking the entire Music Center Plaza, the steps, the relationship of the Music Center to the community, to the street, and so forth. Uh, the Music Center and I re-engaged uh, Mark Rios uh, to do a very sensitive project to renovate and improve uh, the Mark Taper Forum, which is a historic building here at the Music Center. And he uh, and his partners came up with ingenious schemes to, uh, to completely gut the interior of the theater uh, and totally remake the insides of the Mark Taper Forum and then put it back together in a way that uh, won the applause of conservationists in, in uh, Los Angeles, uh, our audiences, the theater people. So he did a great job on that. And then meanwhile, uh, he was also working on the park across the street. Uh, and so in all these things, and. And also, I got to know Mark in the California Endowment Project. The whole building is wonderful, but the courtyard and the landscaping there is just uh, fabulous. Uh, and I think that's been a ter terrific asset to that part of the community. So in all these things, and in various ways, I've had a chance to work with uh, Mark Rios and, uh, and all of his team. And I've just been so impressed with what he's done for us and for Los Angeles. Well, one of the greatest satisfactions that one has is both seeing students realize themselves, but also mature architects realize themselves. <laughs> and uh, I get pleasure out of his achievements. I, I am not surprised ever, because it's what one expects of Mark. <laughs> I like to say, and it's true, he's one of the most efficient and effective people I've ever worked with in my life. Um, puts us all to shame. 
At the same time, he's also one of the, the nicest guys. I mean, really, a nice guy and decent human being. He always does the right thing. He looks out for his colleagues, his friends, his staff, um, and treats them all like family. Mark is absolutely the most generous person that I've ever met, and his ability to continuously sacrifice so that he preserves a community. Mark uh, is a tremendously hard worker, but beyond even that, it's his generosity that makes this um, possible. Mark is probably um, the best partner I can imagine. I mean, I really can't imagine having a better partner than he's been. What else can I say? <laughs>